Will the population level off or will it crash? Some information on both sides of this debate. Five key points to make in this. Uh, carrying capacity is the environmental limit to a population, but we don't know what the carrying capacity is for humans. We're only guessing at that. Populations of mammals and humans have been known to follow a J-shaped curve, like the letter J, uh, to exceed the carrying capacity and to crash. So that's a cautionary tale. But the good news is that the rate of population growth has decreased recently. It's still not yet zero, but it's headed down, word or so it seems, and so the number of people will continue to grow for several more decades, but it looks as though the population will level out. Also, we know that historically, um, more productive agriculture has resulted in dramatic declines in population growth. So raising um, the productivity of agriculture in very poor subsistence areas uh, may help uh, decrease population growth, as will raising the status and literacy of women. So those are two ways in which we can work to lower uh, the birth rates. Now why discuss population in NRM? Well, analysts study population to determine how much demand there will be for different resources in the future. Wood is one that takes a long time to grow, depending on what you want the wood for, but let's say you're, you're, you want it for large timbers. Those take time to grow, maybe 60 years at a minimum for dug fir. So we'll need to be planting those trees now in order to have the wood available in 60 years' time. Also, we know that people are wanting more food. As they get richer, they want more food, and they want a lot more meat. So although our population will only increase by about 50% um, by 2050, we expect the meat demand to double in that much time. Likewise, electricity and oil demand are both increasing faster than the population is increasing. 9 to 11 billion people are forecasted to be on the planet by the year 2050, and they will need a lot of resources. Odds are that the number will be closer to 9. That's what we're thinking now, and all signs seem to indicate that. Um, and let's, I hope that that's the case because I can't imagine how we can provide for 11 billion people. Uh, if you multiply the per capita consumption by the population, you get an idea of what this uh, 6.8 billion people who are currently on the planet demand. So let's say that they want just one toothpick if uh, uh, per year. So just one toothpick per year and you multiply by 6.8 billion people, that's basically a large forest that has to come down um, every time uh, this population wants one toothpick. Um, and if you think about cans and bottles and plastic bags and all the other things that 6.8 billion people are going to use, it's a lot of stuff. This uh, population can't even breathe without having a major impact on the planet. There's just so many of us. Things that are innocuous, just uh, no big deal when there were 200 million of us. Now that there's 6.8 billion, we can't do hardly anything that's innocuous. So what exactly is the current population? Well, it's 6.8 billion right now, and it's expected to hit about 7 billion in um, either 2011 or 2012. Now, this is a map of the population in 1999 when we hit 6 billion people, um, and we're almost to, to 7 billion just, uh, just 11 years later. Note that two-thirds of the current population lives in Southeast Asia, and this will continue for a while to come. Here in 2030 is a forecast of what it will look like. By the way, each one of these dots represents a million people. And if you want to test your geography, you can kind of try to guess where all the, what all these dots represent, which cities, for the ones that are kind of isolated. So anyway, um, so you can see how much um, Southeast Asia is going to expand. In fact, India is likely to to exceed the population of China by 2030. It, India will be about 1.8 billion people. It's not quite 1.2 billion right now. It will be almost 2 billion people in India alone by the year 2030. Africa will be pushing a billion people 
and some of the poorest countries in the world continue to exist in Africa. So how big is a billion anyway? How long would it take you to count to a billion if you took just one second to count each number? Two months, three years, 11 years, or 32 years? What do you think? Well, you probably guessed 32 years to count to a billion. So then how long would it count, take you to count all 6.8 billion on the planet? Well, that would take 216 years, taking just one second for each of those people. Well, by that time, of course, we have a very different population uh, by the time you'll finish this. You may not even live to finish counting all those people. Another way to consider it is how long would it take you to count the 80 million people we are adding each year. So we're adding 80 million each year. Now, this is equivalent to the populations of the states of California, Texas, and New York combined every year. All the people in California, all those in Texas, and all those in New York combined, we are adding every year. Um, so how long would it take you to count all of them that we're adding just in a year? The answer to that is 2.5 years. So that's a fair number of people um, that we have on the planet now and that we're adding. Next, let's look at carrying capacity. What is the concept? What does it look like? And how close are we to staying within it?